Thank you very much. Uh, this talk is called 1942, uh, Representing History. 1942 was a LARP about everyday life during the Second World War in a small Norwegian village. It was an ambitious project uh, where an entire fjord village with a power plant was transformed into a community under German occupation. 1942 was first made way back in 2000, and 17 years later, we redid and rewrote the LARP for two brand new runs in the village of Flörli, located in the most typical Norwegian scenery, a fjord. Uh, we had two runs. In the first run, um, uh, the Norwegian characters spoke Norwegian and the German characters spoke German. So the majority of the players uh, for, the, for that run were from Norway or German-speaking countries. And then we did what we called an international run, where Norwegian was English and uh, German was Scandinavian. So it was open to participants from around the world. 1942 was designed in the so-called 360 degrees illusion tradition of LARP. With this, we mean that great effort was made on adapting the LARP location into as believable an environment as possible that gave the feeling of historical accuracy to the participants. So in this talk, I will give some examples of the things that were created from this design principle and uh, to enhance the player's experience. And I will also talk about what it meant that this was a historical LARP and uh, how we related to history. Many of the buildings, as you can see here in Flörli, were aesthetically well suited for portraying a LARP set in the 1940s. But the scenography team did an extensive work to improve the visuals in many of the houses and apartments. Uh, among the things we did was transporting a lot of furniture. Uh, uh, this is just small examples of furniture. Uh, <coughs> uh, were, uh, were brought to the village of Flörli and uh, houses were de redecorated to make as uh, 40 uh, visual aesthetics as possible. Um, Another thing we did was radio. Uh, we had radio transmissions. Let's see. When I lost now so the radio, we um, uh, got hold of uh, um, um, the um, uh, trans, uh, the, what is it called? The transmits, uh, the broadcasts, the broadcasts, the actual historical broadcasts uh, from uh, German, British, and Norwegian radio at the time. So there was a radio program uh, that you can tune into uh, uh, if you had access to one of the radios in the game. We had a switchboard, which you see in this uh, picture here. Uh, most of the houses in the village had telephones, uh, and a family was operating and working on the switchboard so uh, that you could call uh, the rest of the village. And when you saw the picture of the village of Flörli, you saw that it was pretty steep, uh, so it gave uh, some other play opportunities to be able to call everyone in the village and not run around uh, the steep hills all the time to find people. Also, of course, the family who manned the switchboard, they can listen in on the communication of other families and of the Germans. We had um, uh, a power plant uh, that is no longer operating uh, in the village. Uh, we uh, worked on uh, um, the control room uh, of this power plant to make it into uh, a playable space so that uh, the characters who worked at the power plant, they had work to do there. And we also did sonography in, uh, the, in the power plant, uh, as you can see here. Uh, 1942 can be called a simulationist LARP. With calling it that, I mean that we try to create an experience, an illusion of living in a functional society where people go to work in the power plant, go out fishing in the fjord, operate the switchboard uh, in your home while the uh, bread is baking in the oven, and going to church choir practice in the evening. We encouraged our participants to focus on everyday life and into personal play rather than striking out for the loud epic story. Uh, but as this was a village under occupation, uh, an important part of everyday life was the pressure of living under occupation. 
Um, were you ostracized by others in the village for collaborating with uh, the Germans? Or were you fearing for your own and your family's safety because you were part of distributing the illegal newspaper? When we make and play a historical LARP, it is us looking back at history. It can never be a true reflection of history, but we wanted to approach history in a respectful and nuanced way, trying to approach something authentic where this was possible. We put what we learn about the period we play in a historical LARP into our contemporary context as players. What aspects of the LARP connect with issues that fills our lives and world situation today? One theme that many participants had reflections on uh, afterwards was the topic of resistance. It can be thinking about what choice would I have made uh, if I were in that situation? Living under totalitarian rule, would I have chosen to resist despite the danger uh, it would put myself and uh, those close to me in? Uh, would I collaborate with rulers? After all, somebody has to make everyday life still work, right? Uh, or what if I was born into a family who supported uh, the rulers, or fell in, some, uh, fell in love with someone who was part of the system? What choice would I then have made? Uh, would I have uh, uh, been convinced that the ideology and the propaganda was true, that it was the others, the ones resisting, who were the real traitors and not me? Uh, a lot of players made reflections around that. The ice front was something that was a big part of social interaction in this occupied village. Uh, the community you live in demand that you take a stand. Different characters got a feel of either being ostracized by their neighbors, being one of those upholding the ice front through social pressure, or being someone who publicly upheld the ice front while making exceptions on the side for personal reasons. Experience this could give room for thought about how and when we communicate with people in a society who have joined extreme ideological movements, and how a tactic of ostracizing people, while in some cases one of the few acts of resistance available, can also lead to ugliness like women being judged sexual traitors for having the wrong type of relationships. The price of resistance is something I think many uh, participants have thought about. When you make the choice to resist violent authoritarian rule, you put yourself and those close to you in danger, often without being able to involve them in that decision. Even if we can generally agree that resisting such a rule is the moral right thing to do, I think uh, one thing that uh, players could get out of 1942 is a greater understanding of the price of making that choice and also understanding why many people made other types of choices. Thank you.